Hey y'all, Cheryl here with Losing to Live. And Daisy is here with me today as well. Say hello, Daisy. Um, I don't think she might be a little camera shy today, but we'll see. So last week when I spoke with you, I kind of told you that I had made the decision to have weight loss surgery. And I went into a little bit of detail about my history and why I felt like I had finally reached the point that I wanted to do that. So now what I want to do this week is kind of tell you what my process has been. Kind of tell you what my process has been to get me to the point that I'm at right now where I'm waiting for my surgery date. So, sorry, my son is playing with the dog. Right, come on. So April of this year, I made the decision to have weight loss surgery. I had thought about it in the past. My husband and I had talked about it and we had just decided it wasn't for me. I wasn't ready. Um, I just didn't, it made me really nervous. But I think I honestly didn't have enough information. So I finally reached my breaking point in April of this year. And I called my doctor at the bariatric office <coughs> excuse me actually she's my PA Lisa I had been seeing her for over a year under medical weight management where I had tried to take the Fentramine went on and off of it but then I had lost focus I had changed jobs so in April I was at my highest ever weight which I think was 237 I'm not sure may have been 238 but I'm pretty I think it was 237 so I called Lisa and I said, okay, I've had it. I'm over it. I'm ready to have the surgery. She said, I think that's a great idea. We discussed the different surgery options, what kind there were. And based on my um, needing to lose about 100 pounds and I don't have acid reflux or gallbladder issues, she suggested VSG which I did a little bit research over the next couple days and I agreed that VSG was the way for me to go. VSG is vertical sleeve gastrectomy and some people call it the gastric sleeve. And what it does is it removes 80% of your actual stomach and makes it in the shape of a sleeve or kind of like a banana, which is I think the same thing that they do in the gastric bypass, except for they also bypass part of your intestine, whereas the VSG procedure doesn't have that portion involved with it. So I decided that was the surgery I wanted to have. I called her back. She put me in touch with someone at the office that is called a pathway advisor. This is someone that runs your insurance. I have Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. Um, and this lady will run the insurance and kind of tell me and take me through the steps of you have to do this first and then this and then this. So what they found out I needed was three months of medically supervised attempted weight loss, which I had and they had documentation of that because I've been going there over a year. And then they needed to get started with my primary doctor's approval. I went to my primary doctor the next week. She said, yes, I think the sleeve is a great idea for you. I think it would do great for you. So she signed off on it right away. I also had to do some blood work. So I did that right away. Um, and I called the pathway manager back. She said, okay, we need to get you said scheduled for an endoscopy. And then we also need to get your psychological exam and your nutrition exam. So we scheduled the endoscopy and during the three weeks, it was about three weeks away. So during those three weeks, I had an appointment with the nutritionist and she did not approve me right away. She wanted to follow up after a month. I don't know if that's standard or not. I don't know if I said the wrong thing or what, but she wanted to follow up in a month. The exact same thing happened with the psychological that happened with the nutritionist. They both said, I want to follow up with you in a month. So while waiting for that, I started implementing the steps that they wanted me to take. And then I had my endoscopy, which was actually the first time that I ever met my surgeon. He was not in the office the day that I had went in initially and all of my appointments from then on had been video with Skype. 
other than, of course, the blood work that I had to have done. So, I had my endoscopy done, and then about a week after that, I had my second appointments with both the psychological and also the nutrition, and they both signed off and approved me. So, the only, I called the pathway manager back, and I said, okay, I think I've done everything that we needed. She goes back and looks, and she says, well, we still need an EKG, which, I thought they had already done an EKG, but she said apparently my insurance said it has to be in less than six months old at the time of surgery, so the one they had done with me previously was too old. So I called my primary doctor, got an appointment scheduled for the next week, got in there and got the EKG done. Then again, I thought, okay, now we're finished. Nope. The pathway advisor says, um, no, now you need to have an exercise class with our exercise coach here at the clinic. Never said a word about that prior to this, which was fine. I don't mind doing it. I was just annoyed at the fact that here I was, I thought I was finished with all of the steps and they threw another thing at me. So it kind of left me wondering, okay, I'm gonna do this appointment and then what hurdle is gonna be thrown at me next? So I was a little frustrated, but I did the appointment and again, it was just a video appointment and we discussed um, exercise routines, what I should be doing, what I cannot do after surgery, etc. <clears throat> so the next day, that appointment was a Monday afternoon. The next day I called again and I said, okay, what's next? And so she looked at it. She sent me a message back later that day. She said, we're going to send it to your insurance uh, effective today and we'll let you know when we get the approval back. You just have to wait. Based on you guys' stories, other people I've watched on YouTube, I have heard that this can take weeks to get an approval, that at first you can get a denial and then, you know, appeal and all this stuff. So I was anticipating having to wait. No. She called me the very next day and said, hey, we got your approval back from your insurance. We're ready to schedule your surgery. I was speechless. I was floored one day out. I mean, I had even went so far as to go on my portal, um, the online thing for my insurance and sent them a message to see how long it would take or if I could get the status of it and had not even got an answer back from them yet. And she's calling me saying she got the approval and she was ready to schedule. So I was really excited. <clears throat> um, she actually called me on July 1st with the approval and said that they could schedule my surgery as early as July 14th, which was crazy. However, because I changed jobs um, right before this, I had to wait. So I have to wait until after August 12th for my FMLA to kick in for me to be able to take the two weeks off. So I said, no, I actually need to wait till after August 12th. I really had no idea it would even be an option to have it done that soon. So my surgery is scheduled for August 18th. Um, I'm very excited. I will start my pre-surgery or liquid diet on August the 4th. My clinic does require two week liquids. Um, I know a lot of people can still eat vegetables or a high protein meal or something like that. <clears throat> My surgeon's office is very strict on two weeks of liquids that I'm going to have to do. So right now I'm in the process of, um, getting all of my supplies that I'm going to need for that, for those two weeks and then, um, just get ready. So I'm on the countdown. I'm very excited. So I think next week I'll come to you and I'll kind of tell you what all I've gotten. I might share a haul with what I'm preparing and then we'll get ready to start that liquid diet. So if you want to come along on this journey with me, I would love to have you. So like and share and subscribe and um, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye.